Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Kai and today I have for you yet another haul. Um, I have a problem. I buy way too many nail supplies, but I hope that all of these hauls are helpful to you if you're looking to order any of these products. I will give them a swatch, talk a little bit about them, what I think on first impression. So I do have a number of items, including the entire um, like basic gel set from Yogurt Nail Korea, some metallic inks, some 3D gel. This is the Yogo Black Jam, the full once in a summer collection from Divock, and then they have some chrome powders from Nail Bio. Uh, I ordered all of this back in probably June, July. It's now September. I'm really bad at filming my hauls and actually sitting down to show off all of my products, but I did want to get this out there, especially since the Once in a Summer 2 collection is back in stock. I know it was sold out for a while. Um, I'm hoping they come out with the individual shades for sale soon, but I will show you the whole collection in case you are interested in picking up this or any of these other items. I do have a code with Sweetie Nail Supply that you can use to save 10% off and support me at the same time. It is Get Pressed. I will link it down below along with everything in this video. So I really appreciate everyone being here watching. And for those of you who are new, please, if you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe. I do tons of hauls, nail art, all that kind of fun nail related stuff. So yeah, let's just go ahead and get into this before I ramble on too much. All right, so first off, I guess let's start with the basic gels. So this was a packaged set of Yogurt Nail Korea's full line of basic gels. It comes with a matte top coat, the zero top gel, the zero base gel, and then a honey clear gel. Here are all of the bottles. One thing's for sure, I really appreciate that each gel is a different color. I have the biggest problem when brands do their bottles for base and top gel in the same color. And that is I will sometimes accidentally not put away my base gel and I will reach for that instead of the top gel when I'm going to finish a design. And then I will put a nice layer of base gel all over my finished set, ruin it, not ruin it, but then I'll have to paint over with another layer of top coat and it just adds bulk that didn't need to be there in the first place. So yes, I really appreciate that they are all color coded and they're very distinct from each other. The packaging on the yogurt gel bottles is always just so cute, very colorful, and I love the font for the logo. So yeah, let me go ahead and talk about the consistencies of all of these. So let's start with the base gel. So I have used this before in a couple of my videos so far. I wanted to give it a try and it has a really interesting texture. Let me show you what I mean. It almost feels stringy. And what I mean by that is when you pull it away from itself, um, it tends to leave like a really thin strand. I don't know if you can see that here. Let me see. When you pull it away from itself, it creates like this little connecting strand. And I think that's because it just sticks to itself really well, which I can only assume means it's really good for retention. I haven't actually worn it yet. I've used it on some press-ons and so far I really liked it. The consistency, even though it's got that kind of like stringiness to it, it is on the thinner side, which I do occasionally like a thinner base gel, a thinner top gel for when I already know I'm going to be going in with plenty of layers of nail polish, of art, and I don't really want to build up too much bulk at the outset of the nail design. So I have been reaching for this quite a bit, actually, I will say. Um, it's just, it's a really interesting consistency. It, it doesn't create any lumps or anything in the actual end product. I just find it so, um, yeah, so interesting just how it clings to itself like that. So yeah, that's the base gel. Then the package does come or the set comes with two different types of top gels. This one here is your standard non-wipe top gel, a thinner consistency, whereas this one here, the honey clear gel, is more of a thicker consistency overlay top gel. 
It is, however, non-wipe as well. This one I believe is called Zero Top Gel because, well, there's zero wiping. And then I also think it is marketed as non-yellowing or at least um, it's meant to resist yellowing. So let's give it a try, shall we? So I have these little white plastic uh, mixing, disposable mixing palettes, and it's usually a really good test for how a polish will work, um, for how much yellowing it produces. So I'm just gonna open this here. I haven't used this yet, so I'm curious to see what the consistency is like. Okay, so it's definitely a thinner consistency. Very much uh, like a low viscosity. It's going to be really nice for adding a thin layer of protective top gel over your design. I have been using a lot of like thicker top gels lately, which again, I do like them for many applications, namely when you have an uneven surface to begin with. But if you're looking for a top gel for just a simple nail design with not a lot of texture, this would probably be a really good option for a thinner consistency top gel. All right, let's see how it looks on the palette. I'm gonna layer it quite thick because I wanna see just how much it does yellow if you have quite a thick layer. This is probably thicker in reality than you would use on your nail. You're probably using a thinner coat on the nail, so we will see how this turns out. I'm also going to test this one here against it, the Honey Clear Gel. And this one is supposed to be thicker, meant for overlays. So let's see if that's true. Yes, this definitely feels thicker. You can see here it's somewhat holding its shape. I can at least turn the brush over and it collects at the bottom, but it doesn't drip off or anything like that. So yeah, this is really good for overlays if you have texture, if you're trying to encapsulate stickers or maybe dried flowers, things that are slightly sticking up from the nail and you want to just smooth out that surface. I think this would be a really good option. So here are my two swatches before going in. This is the zero, this is the honey. Sticking it in my lamp for the full 60 seconds. While that's curing, I will talk about the matte top coat. So this is the So Delicious Cotton Matte Top Gel. I have used this. I used it on my recent nail design, the 3D Teddy Bear Croissant Nails. If you haven't seen that yet, I'll put the link right up here. Um, it's definitely one of my favorite designs of a recent time. I was super pleased with it. It took me a long time to sculpt little teddy bears by hand and it just it's such a fun cozy fall set. I'm I'm really proud of myself with that one. So if you haven't seen it, um definitely go check it out. But I do use this matte top coat. It is really nice matte top coat. Let me show you the consistency. It's runny but not too thin to where when you lay it down there are streaks. I've had matte top coats before that were just so incredibly thin that they did leave some streaking. And nobody wants a streaky matte finish. The whole point of a matte finish is that it's nice and velvety smooth. So yeah, I was a big fan of this. Um, I haven't done any chrome isolation with this yet, so I'm not sure if it would work for that. I did get those chrome powders though, so we can try that later in the video. Okay, and here's our tester clear gels right out of the nail lamp. Um, there was a bit of yellowing, so you can see here, again, there's a reason I like using these pure white pads is because you can really see how much yellowing is involved, but these are the results. There is a little bit of yellowing. Um, I would say though, surprisingly, a lot of clear gels have that little bit of yellowing. Like, let me compare it to another clear that I have. So I did a little experiment. Um, here is, focus. Here is a brand that I have that is on the cheaper end, um, a pretty popular one actually. And you can see this one here is the Yogurt Nail Zero. This one is the Honey. And then this one is the 
well, I won't name the brand, but it's a pretty popular, uh, somewhat affordable brand that a lot of people use. And you can see it that this one is quite a bit more yellow. Okay. And this one has actually had the least amount of cure time. This one and this one here. This one here is actually just this gel, the zero matte, not the zero matte, sorry, the zero top gel. But I used the low heat setting on my lamp. The one where it kind of like flashes a couple seconds on, second off. And you can see that actually doing that low heat setting decreased the yellowness quite a bit too. So if you have a lamp that has like a low heat setting with the flashes of light, I would recommend doing that for the zero top gel and you actually get even better results in terms of the yellowing. So yeah, um, really nice. I'm excited to use that more often. Now I did also get this here. This is Yogurt Nail Korea's Syrup Number no. 5. I believe um, it's from the wedding collection. I will put like a little thing up in the corner here explaining exactly where it's from. It'll also be linked down in the description. But I wanted just like a really nice pure milky white from Yogurt Nail. I do really enjoy the formula of their syrup polishes. I think they're just nice and thick and creamy. I do like a slightly thicker syrup gel because I feel like then I can float the color over in a pretty decent layer and it self levels really nicely and doesn't pool too much at the edges because I know if I'm using a syrup gel, I'm going to be layering it and I don't want too much of it gathering at the edge of the nail and just adding bulk there. So this is what it looks like. Again, it's just a nice pure milky white and I will swatch it for you because I'm actually going to use this as the base to try a couple of those chrome powders. So I'm going to make a couple swatch sticks here actually. Okay, so let me show you one so you can see how it self levels. See the formula is just really nice and thick and creamy doesn't immediately flow to the edge of the nail. It will flow eventually because it is still, you know, like a, a standard polish. It's not like a 3D gel or a builder gel or anything like that, but it just, it goes on so nicely, self levels really well. And that thick creamy texture means that you don't get too much pulling at the edges. And look at that. That was only one coat and I honestly like you could probably get away with one coat of this and have like a really nice um syrupy white color it is quite opaque I will say so if you're looking for um an even more sheer white then maybe this one's not for you I have noticed that yogurt nail tends to be a little bit more on the opaque side for their syrup gels versus some other brands. I do really like Devox consistency on their syrup gels. I just know that they are slightly more sheer and the yogurt nail are more opaque. So it's really a matter of preference and what you're trying to use them for. But I do really love that consistency. It's just so nice. All right, let me finish up these swatch sticks and I will come right back. So I guess that white is a good segue into my next product, which is... The Divock Vanta Black. Now, I have already opened this. Um, as you can tell, I have used it in a design. It was the 3D jellyfish nails using the inks from the Favori. I will link that up here as well if you would like to check it out. I wanted to show it off though because I haven't really talked about it in a haul before. And I was so, so impressed with this. Again, this is the Divock Vanta Black. It is a cream color DPO2, and it is truly a really nice one coat black. I am a firm believer that if you want an opaque cream color black or white, there's no reason you shouldn't be able to make a one coater. I've tried some others before, uh, and they're just too sheer if I want a sheer polish I'm gonna go for uh, a syrup gel right but nope this is a really nice one coat black 
Uh, the only thing I can compare it to that I've tried otherwise is um, probably the Gel Monster gels. So Gel Monster is the brand by Zillabio and they are vegan, cruelty free, all that good stuff. Hema free or Hema free, I guess. And they make a really nice one coat black and white as well. But I would say this is very comparable just depending on where you would like to order from. I also think that Divock is supposed to be Hema free. I will double check and put something up here just to give you the correct answer. Um, but I do believe that they strive to also be 13 and Hema free. So here's this black. It's a really nice consistency too. It's not too thick to where it's clumpy, but it's also not too runny to where it is going to be too sheer and go all over the place. So let me show you this on the nail. Now you do need a little bit um, more product around like the bends in the nail if you want it to be one coat. I would caution it against going too, too thick though on your coat because if you go too thick, there is a potential, right, that you're not curing it all the way through. And there you go, one coat. It's just so nice to work with because it self levels really nicely. It's that one coat black that you don't need to go in and layer to build up bulk multiple times. So here's the profile view. You can see again, self levels really nicely. And yeah, I just, I love this product. What can I say? I'll go ahead and cure it. Then I think actually I'm going to go ahead and take these white swatch sticks that I made and I am going to paint over half so that we can do kind of like a chrome over black versus white comparison. It's not even just clear that it goes over really easily. It's also a white. Here it is, by the way, after 60 seconds of a cure, no wrinkling whatsoever. I've noticed before that some blacks will wrinkle a little bit if they aren't fully cured because they're too opaque and the light can't penetrate whatever it may be, but I've never had a problem with wrinkling. I also do have a really nice lamp though, I will say. Um, speaking of which, I will have for you somewhat soon um, a review of the Sweetie Nail Supply Lamp. They are gifting me that, which I'm so grateful for. Um, I'm just, I'm so blessed to be in the position I am, which is as a BA for Sweetie Nail Supply because I love Korean Japanese gel products. I had been purchasing from Sweetie Nail Supply for a long time um, before I became a BA and I'm just so grateful that they took a chance on, you know, a smaller YouTuber like me. So yeah, I should have a review of their lamp sometime soon. All right, so with my swatches done, I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the chrome powders and we can do some chrome powder swatching. So first things first, I'm just wiping the tacky layer off of the swatches. And then I'm going to use the honey gel because the website on Sweetie Nail Supply, it did say that you could use chrome with this. So we'll give it a try. Now, I don't, you don't really need to wipe away um, the tacky layer all the time when you're doing gel nails. I just prefer doing it um, if I'm doing chrome, just to ensure that for some reason, I don't like miss a patch and then the chrome powder just sticks all over that one area and I can't easily get it off without ruining the rest. So I do just give it a wipe down and then I go in with my top coat. While I am doing this, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to everybody. Uh, I did reach kind of a huge milestone for me. It was 3000 subscribers. Okay, sorry, my camera died, so I don't know where I left off, but I was just saying that I'm I'm just super grateful that I'm in the position I am in with my channel. I'm super thankful to all of you who follow and who watch my content. 
who leave me just the absolute sweetest messages honestly they make my day because i'm i'm the kind of person that is very hard on myself i will always be my harshest critic that goes for my day job too which is teaching i it makes me upset um when my students don't succeed and in a lot of ways i feel like what could i have done wrong um what more could i do to help them and i just i have a mindset that at points is probably not really healthy to be honest but i do think what it gives me in general is a pretty good work ethic i strive to do the best that i can in any endeavor um but nails for me even though i take pride in my work they are kind of like my way of relaxing. They're my happy space, so to speak. I definitely have a retail therapy problem because I enjoy buying pretty things for nails. But this channel has really helped me just share my artistic side more because for a long time I was really focused on school. I'm in my fourth full year of teaching after a half a year of interning and then a quarter of doing some private tutoring at the school that I interned at. So doing nails was just a way for me to get back into art, get back in touch with my creative side. And on a whim, I decided, hey, why don't I, why don't I film? You know, why don't I just throw myself out there on the internet, uh, you know, to be seen by strangers. And I'm so happy I did. I'm having tons of fun with it. Even if I do stress sometimes, I'll be honest, I do stress about making sure that I'm consistent with my content, that I'm balancing, you know, school and this well enough. So sometimes um, it does get a little bit much, I'll admit. But overall, um, I'm just, I'm very thankful that I'm able to do it and I'm enjoying it at the same time. And I just, I'm really grateful. Thank you so much for 3,000 subscribers that's crazy to me because I had actually done YouTube before uh, for digital art for drawing portraits and I think the most I got on that was like 150 on my old channel so this is just insane to me actually uh, quite insane um, but I'm, I'm super happy and super blessed as a thank you, I will actually be doing a giveaway. So if you made it to this portion of the video, I wanted to announce it kind of like in the middle. I wanted to not put it in the title or anything like that because I, I would like it to go to one of my subscribers who has been around, who comments and who interacts with my videos, who, you know, has just really been part of the community. So. All right, so my camera cut out again. I'm still figuring out the storage space, all of that, but I deleted some old footage. Anyway, what I was saying, hopefully all the rules and stuff up to this point were clear, but I do want this giveaway to be for someone who's been around my channel, who's interacted with my community by commenting. So please, if you're going to enter, just make sure that you've commented on my videos before, um, before this point that is, I can go ahead and um, check my comments for uh, your name. So if you would like to enter and you've commented before, you've been around the channel, even if it's within the last couple weeks, that's fine too. I just really wanted to be to somebody who, you know, has been here and supporting me before, um, kind of like the giveaway. Um, go ahead and comment down below the cake emoji. So just the slice of cake. Um, I don't want to make it too obvious what's going on if people are just kind of like watching um, the, the beginning and end. So yeah, go ahead and comment that cake slice emoji. I will go ahead and enter you into the giveaway. And the giveaway, by the way, is for some of my favorite Korean products. So I believe I'm putting in there um, a little tub of the... Jinbi Crazy Top. I've got some like basic syrup colors that are some of my favorites. Um, and then I don't remember exactly what else. I think I have a brush that's going to go in there as well. But yeah, just again, some of my 
favorite basics from my Korean brands that I use pretty regularly. Um, it's not like a huge giveaway or anything, but it's definitely uh, a nice one, I would say. And if you are looking to try some Korean products, hey, it will be a great opportunity. So yeah, I will go ahead and pick somebody. Let's see in two weeks. So in two weeks, I'll draw a name and I will put the results on my community tab and tag you in it. If I don't hear back, then I will go ahead and just redraw after maybe like a day or two just to make sure that, you know, I get a winner and that I get their products sent out. So yeah, um, definitely enter if you would like to, if you've commented on my channel before and I'm excited to see who wins. And just thank you. Thank you again for being here and just watching my videos. All right, back to nails. Um, I've gone ahead and I've top coated all of them with that yogurt nail honey top coat. I am going to take the mat here and just top coat like half of this one just because I want to see if the chrome powder is going to stick to it. I'm doing all kinds of experimenting today. <laughs> But I am really trying to make these hauls uh, helpful as much as possible so that, you know, if you're looking to buy certain products that maybe you can get some insight here and either spend your money where you know you want to or maybe save some of it if you know you don't want to. <laughs> okay, so now that I have all of this sorted, let's get into the chrome. Now there are a few different brands of chrome powders on Sweetie Nail Supply. This is the Nail Bio brand. I believe this is a smaller creator. I actually had originally seen her on Instagram, I think. Uh, she does like little short tutorials. She has a YouTube as well. And she branched out into creating her own nail products. So yeah, I picked these up because I have her gold and silver, her basics. And I really like the consistency. The powder was super finely milled. It seemed to be, you know, like very pure in terms of the pigments. There wasn't like any extra talc or anything. So I really wanted to try some um, like other colors. So not just gold and silver, but like some iridescence and some more transparent chromes. So yeah, this one here, I believe this one's real juju. I will put the name up here anyway. But this one is supposed to be kind of like a, an iridescent, key purpley blue situation. So let's swatch this one. Okay, so I'm noticing I think I might have over cured the gel a little bit. Um, Sometimes if you cure top coat too much, then chrome powder has a really hard time sticking to it. And I was a dummy and I put all the swatch sticks in at different times. So some of them were cured for like two minutes total. But my trick is, and we'll see if it works, if you've over cured your gel and it's not sticking the chrome powders, if you wipe it down with just a little bit of isopropyl alcohol, this is 50, not 50, um, 91%. And then you go right in with your chrome powder. Yep, see, it just, it sticks. I don't know what it is, but it just creates enough of a tacky layer on that top coat to get that chrome powder to stick. And then you have lovely chrome. So this one's real juju. This is what it looks like over black and white polish. It's this really pretty purpley blue pinky green shift. It, is very fairy-like, mermaid-like. Um, in person, a lot of that green is coming through. A lot of the like yellow tones. On camera, you don't see quite as much of the green or yellow, I feel like. So just know that in person, there is a little bit more of a strong bluish, uh, greenish shift to it. But yeah, super pretty, very magical. So each package does come with an eyeshadow applicator, which I appreciate. All right, this one here is just silver. I needed a restock on this. 
Oh. That wasn't good. Um. <laughs> oh. Okay. Um. That's unfortunate. What a shame. Um. Okay. That's okay. I'll just, we'll just, we'll clean it up uh, after this. <laughs> um, uh, you know, I feel like what actually makes me upset when I do this kind of thing is not that I've made a mess, but that I've wasted product. Chrome powders like this are not that cheap. Um, I believe this one was $11, maybe even 9 Nail Bio is definitely one of the cheaper options when it comes to these kinds of chrome powders. Now, granted, I think these are like anywhere between 0.3 grams and a gram in the container. You do get more in a brand like Bonnie B. But if you're just needing a little bit, you don't need a lot and you don't want to spend $20 on one chrome powder, I would definitely recommend the Nail Bio. However, if you know that you are going to be using a ton of the chrome powder, then I would go with something that comes with a little bit more like Bonnie B. All right, let's go ahead and give this a swatch. And I'm just going to wipe this down with some alcohol right away because I don't remember which, uh, which nails I accidentally over cured. At this point, I don't care about making a mess, so I'm going to go ahead and be messy. For wiping away extra crumb, I really like these little makeup sponges. These are just disposable ones. I think I even got them at Walmart, maybe. Um, but they're super nice for wiping that extra off the nail. And this is the silver. It has a really nice shine to it. I don't know, I'll be honest, if I would really use um, the honey top coat for chrome because I'm looking right now and it does seem to be not sticking maybe well enough. Though again, that might have been user error. This might be over cured slightly because uh, I'm noticing like a little teeny tiny patchiness in this chrome. And I've used it before on other things and it's not had kind of that same patchiness, but it is just a really nice bright silver color. This one is Barbie Pink. So this is supposed to be just like a nice bright pink chrome. It's interesting because in the jar it looks green. And one thing I know about chrome powders is that often in the jar they are going to look opposite to the color that they actually are. That's just something about the way that the pigments work. So hopefully this is just a really nice pink. If I can get it open, geez. This one was sealed really nice and tight. Okay, here we go. Oh, that's so interesting. Like look at how yellow, yellow green it looks. It's almost fluorescent, almost neon. Let's get that a wipe down. And who knows, maybe I'm the problem here. <laughs> Uh, with wiping down the nails with that alcohol. Maybe I'm the one that's causing the slight patchiness. I don't even know at this point. It's late guys. It's like 11.30 on Friday after a long week of school. And I'll be honest, my brain is kind of fried at this point. Teaching is interesting because in a lot of ways, it's a very social job. I have to be, you know, talking to people all the time. And so sometimes Friday evenings, I get home and I'm just, I'm dead. However, I do want to get this video out for you all. So I am filming at like 1130 at night right now, but here's this one. This is Barbie pink and it does have a really nice pink sheen to it. It's showing like very pink on camera. I will say in person, um, I don't know. Yeah, I guess it is. I was gonna say it's a little bit like this one here, like the real Juju, but I guess this one is more warm toned now that I'm looking at them together, but they are very close. Like this one is definitely a brighter pink when it comes to the sheen, the shine, um, than this one, but they are pretty similar, I would say. So in case you were trying to pick one or the other, here's a comparison. 
over black, over white. Interesting. I thought this was actually going to be more of like a true pink, like just a one-toned chrome. So just know when you pick this one up that it is like a duo shifting chrome that's both a pink and like this greener color here. Alrighty, and last but not least, when it comes to the chromes, I got Jinju Pearl, and this is just like a um, like a light, a white chrome of sorts. So it's just meant to give like that nice shiny look without really distorting the color too much. I have one of these, but it's like a cheap one from Temu, I think, and it just, it's not very good. It's patchy. Um, you can tell that there's maybe like some talc in the formula versus it being all pigment or at least a majority pigment so i have high hopes for this one here this could be the solution to all of my problems but let's see i'm gonna try to rub it in without the alcohol first and see if that's see if i'm the problem here oh you know what this nail this nail might have been the one that i cured last with the slightly less caring to it because it seems to be going on fine here. You know, if you are going to work with chromes, I would definitely say get you one of these like silicone tools because it will just save you powder. The powder tends to stick to your um, eyeshadow applicators, whatnot, and those will pick up a lot of extra that you maybe don't need. And so a silicone tool like this is going to save you powder and not a mess. It will be messy. I'm just gonna say that outright. Um, the silicone applicator is in some ways maybe even more messy than just a standard sponge because the powder doesn't have anything to cling to, the extra, so yeah, no, it's gonna be more messy, but I do feel like it saves powder. Okay, and this is Jinju. Just a nice pearlescent color. Uh, it is a pretty pure pearl color here. The black does go slightly like blue teal. The white slightly maybe like a tiny bit pink. But otherwise, it's just like a really nice shine to these. Yeah, it's just a nice like pearlescent color without too much uh, color alteration. It just gives it a really nice shine. So here are the four chromes. You have Real Juju, the Silver, Barbie Pink, and the Pearl. I don't use like these kinds of iridescent chrome powders much. I stick to mostly just like golden regular silver. So these ones are kind of new to me. I do have some more on the way. Um, I maybe placed another order <laughs> with Sweeney Nail Supply. So I do have some chromes on the way from their new brand that they're carrying, Blanc Blanc, I believe is how you pronounce it. So I did get a couple from that brand to test out, but yeah, I'm happy with these. And they are, again, these are on the more affordable end. I know the Bonnie B chromes are just stunning, amazing, beautiful. I maybe also have some of those on the way, but I wanted to try these ones out because again, they were kind of like the more affordable brand and I just, they're performing so much better than like the cheap $2 ones that I get off of Timu or whatnot. So I am pleased with these. Oh yeah, and then to test the isolation, see if this is going to stick to this mat. Okay, I'm thinking the verdict is this is a no for chrome isolation. Yeah, okay, good to know. Always, always happy to try things. So definitely the cotton matte top coat, do not use it for chrome isolation. <laughs> um, it does not work, it sticks a lot. I really like actually the Divock Zero Matte Top Coat. It is specifically meant for chrome isolation 
and it does a really good job of it. I don't have any problems with chrome sticking to it when I do an isolated design. I only have had problems if I've continually wiped down the surface because I don't like my chrome application. So if you do wipe down the top coat, the zero matte top coat from Divock too much with alcohol, it will cause the chrome powder to stick. But if you don't, if you only wipe it down maybe like once, I've never had any issues with it sticking. Okay, so up next, I actually have some alcohol inks, some art inks. These are um, from the brand The Favori. I actually was super lucky, super honored to win these. So I saw that The Favori was doing a an ink art contest and I had The Favori Juicy Neon collection. And so I used it in a design. I did like a, a 3D jellyfish design and I placed in the competition, which um, yeah, super happy about. I'm glad everybody liked my work. And so they sent me three inks of my choice. So these are gifted. If you buy them individually, um, often they come in these little boxes here if they're from a collection. They're nicely packaged. They are um, basically alcohol inks. I've done the translation on this and I know they have it on online on the website for these items. They aren't just like the pigment and alcohol. I believe it looks like there are some stabilizers in here as well. You do need to shake them pretty well before you use them as this, uh, the pigments can settle to the bottom. But I do think they have some stabilizers in here that make them different from just like standard alcohol ink, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm definitely no chemist. Um, I liked science in school for sure. Chemistry though was not my favorite subject. I actually really enjoy science and chemistry now. I like learning about it on my own time, learning about things that interest me. I just for some reason in high school could not get behind chemistry, but yeah, um, you do need to give them a good shake. Though again, I think they have those stabilizers in them that make them slightly different from regular alcohol inks. I'm not sure. The Favori makes a ton of different inks. I really want to get eventually at some point um, the pastels collection of inks because they just look so fun to use. The thing about inks is the way that they dry down is so cool. I love how they pull to the edge and so you get this really neat effect where the center of the area that you've applied the ink to is a little bit more transparent and then around the edges it's a little bit more vivid, more vibrant. It looks like watercolors really to me is what I can compare it to and so I have always wanted to try inks, art inks, and I'm just kind of now dabbling in them and I can't wait to do more of that. Like if you can see here, when you lay down the color, it likes to pool at the edges and they don't dry down too, too fast to the point where you can't manipulate them after you've already laid the color down. But as it dries, it just disperses to those edges. You can blend these out with um, the Favori makes like a blending liquid that you can purchase. But honestly, I just, I usually use just acetone, pure acetone. You want to be careful not to use too much of it because then you're going to eat away right at the actual layers of nail polish, but just a teeny tiny little bit on a brush to blend it out um, is a really nice way to get some interesting patterns, some interesting textures, and they layer so you can like layer on top of alcohol ink that's already on there, create like interesting shapes, interesting textures. They're just, they're a lot of fun to use and they create such cool shapes. What can I say? I really want to play around with them more. So this is Anji. It is from one of the collections. I'm not sure which one exactly, but I will put the like the little code right here for the color. One of these is Saturn, one of these is Venus. I think this one's Venus. I think this one's Saturn. 
Okay, I lied. I'm a complete idiot. Um, these I ordered. This is the <laughs> standard Metallics collection. It's the Midnight Gold, Midnight Silver. They come in a set, so I ordered these. These three are the ones that I won from the competition. I'm dumb. Um, I had already put these on my shelves. So let me swatch these and then I will make another swatch and we'll look at these ones. This video is going to be long. I apologize. I really need to stop filming these live because I just, as the kids like to say at school, um, I yap the whole time. Uh, it's a problem. So yeah, midnight gold, midnight silver. As you can see here, this is dried down and it just, it creates such a cool pattern. I just feel like it's such an easy way to add texture to a nail, not literal texture, but visual texture, and to create intrigue in terms of like your colors, the opacity of the colors. It's just a fun way to experiment, I think. I was really going for like the basics here. So I bought like a black, a silver and a gold because I don't do too many like bright colored sets, but I do like really sort of more muted designs. And I just wanted this so that I could add a little bit of sparkle to some of those designs. Very cool. So there's this swatch. Again, you've got black, Midnight Silver and Midnight Gold. These two colors here are very like cool toned metallic. So a very true silver and a very cool toned gold. But yeah, just super fun to play with. Super easy to get dynamic looks. So these three are the ones that I won. Um, I got actually Angel White, I think it is. Yeah, Angel's White, which is like an iridescent metallic white. Saturn, which is like a darker bronze, and Jupiter, Jupiter, which is like a, uh, a just a slightly lighter bronze. So let me swatch these ones too. I will say you do have to shake the heck out of some of these um, to really get them going. Once the metal ball's loose, if it gets stuck in the sediment at the bottom though, it's much easier to mix. Um, I find it's easy to just take your hands between your hands and just roll it at least to get that ball nice and loose and then you can shake it the regular way okay so this is angel's white not sure how well it's going to show on here since it's a white base but we'll see oh good it still it still shows it still works just a really pretty shimmery white color. This one is Saturn. This is like a, a silvery gold, even more so than this midnight gold. Although looking at them now, they're super similar. This one is maybe almost slightly green in comparison to this one, maybe a little bit deeper. Yeah. I'm not sure. I kind of almost like this one. It has like a cool depth of color to it. Again, like almost a, a green undertone of sorts. I don't really know how to describe it other than that. Yeah, this one's like a, a gray gold. Definitely an interesting one. I do like it. It's just, it's different. I like things when they're different. Like things that are kind of experimental. Not that like a gray gold is experimental per se, um, but it is an interesting tone for sure. I think so at least. All right, and last but not least, we have Saturn, Jupiter. Last one was Saturn, this one's Jupiter. And this one is like a bronze. Mm, yeah, that's a really nice one. I do really like this bronze. What a pretty color, I will say. Okay, and here are all of the ink colors. If you can't tell, I was going for just like some basic metallics and some basic colors. I already have a white that I like from Doey. 
so that's why I picked up like the black and then the various metallics. Super excited to try these out. Um, if you have any tips on using art inks, I would love to hear them in the comments below because I will be experimenting with those. All right, I'm gonna try to speed run through the rest of these um, so that we can get to the collection that I haven't even touched on yet. And this video is already so, so long. I'm sorry, hopefully it's helpful. But I did get a couple just single gels just for fun. This is the Yogurt Korea Vintage Film Collection Gold, I believe. And it is a glitter polish. Now, I've always been looking for a gold like glitter polish because I do the Sakura set that has like a, a flake gold background. And I've been doing it by hand by like crushing up gold foil and sticking it on there. And it just, it's really time consuming. So I was hoping to find a gold flake polish that is nice and clear, but has a good distribution of gold flakes. And this might be it. It's super pretty. I will say the flakes are a little bit more crushed and smaller maybe than I would like for that specific design. But in general, I think the polish is really pretty. So let me show you what it looks like on the nail. It's just a clear polish with all of these gold flakes embedded in it. As you can see, like the gold, it does make it pretty textured. So I would say this is one that you would paint on and then encapsulate in like a, a thicker top coat, maybe like that honey top coat, because these gold flakes do just make it pretty, pretty thick, pretty bumpy. But look at how nice that looks. It's just a, a really pretty smattering of gold. And it looks like real gold foil. Like it's kind of chunky, like uh, gold pieces, not flat like gold foil flakes are, but like actual gold pieces. I highly doubt it is because um, it would be more expensive than this polish was, but it's still a nice look. Let me go ahead and cure this. And I'm pleased to share that there is no cloudiness, it looks like. It's just nice and clear. Okay, very cool. I like that. I can definitely find uses for this here. This one is Syrup 58. Um, I believe it's from the Bunny Chew collection. I don't know if it's the Bunny Chew or the Gelato collection. At this point, I think I've ordered most of both collections individually. I honestly should have just uh, ordered the whole collection instead of thinking, oh, I've got other colors that are similar enough. I don't need the whole collection. And then I find myself reaching for different types of blues at different moments. Like I'll want a cooler toned blue for a design or I'll want like this one, a warmer toned aqua blue or I'll want like an even more warm red toned blue, like a periwinkle. And so I just, I keep buying different blues. This one I felt like was the perfect sort of light aqua blue syrup. I don't know what it is. I have a lot of trouble talking and doing nails at the same time. Like there's a reason I haven't gone live yet, even though I would love to. And it's just, I don't think I could really carry on a conversation and do nails. I'll be a hundred percent honest. My brain just likes to put all of its focus into making sure that my hand is steady, I think. And so it's hard for me to do nails and talk. Although there, I feel like I did pretty good, but all I was doing was like laying down one color. This is it though. Really nice, gorgeous sky aqua blue, pastel blue. And then I have a couple purple shades, but none fit the exact purple I was looking for. So I did see, I believe it's the fairy tale collection from By Muse. From my understanding, By Muse is either the parent company or an offshoot of D-Gel. I was watching a D-Gel seminar and one of the artists was using a By Muse collection. And I was like, oh, are they like the same brand? And I believe she said that they're like sister products in a way. So yeah, I wanted a purple that was like a true lavender. I have some purples that verge a little too much on the blue side, and I have some that are too dark and too light. 
So this one looked like it was going to be the perfect medium lavender shade. And I am pleased to say that I think it is. I think this is exactly what I was looking for. Really pretty color. Just like, again, a middle of the road. Not too pink, not too blue lavender, and not too dark either. I have the Tiny Sunset Collection. And it does have some really pretty lavenders in there. But they are just a tad too deep of a tone. I wanted like a lighter lavender. And then I also have the Jinbi Sweet Tea Lavender. But that one I would say is too light. It's too pastel of a lavender. And then this one here is falling right in that sweet spot. I'm super happy with this. And the formula honestly is pretty good too. It's a little bit thinner than the Yogurt Nail Korea polish but it does seem to be really smooth. It's self-leveling nicely. I'm probably going to do two coats of this one, so let me cure it and do another. Okay, and here's coat two. Yeah, so these ones are just a bit more sheer than the Yogurt Nail polishes. But that is such a pretty color and quite honestly, exactly what I was looking for in a purple, just that nice, perfect lavender shade, not too warm, not too cool, and the right tone, not too light, not too dark. Super pleased with this. Very happy. I decided to take a chance. Okay. I think I'm getting delirious at this point. Um, it's so late now. It's like midnight, 1230, something like that. So... I'm going to speed this up. This is the Yogo Black Jam. I have shown off before the Milk Jam and the Yogo Clear 3D Clay. I even do like a little consistency test. I will link that um, in the corner there. It's another haul video, but I love their boxes. They're just so cute. And I love this pattern here of these like vectored uh, 3D shaped hearts, not vectored. They're 3D modeled hearts with the mesh and like the little stars and pearls. I just think this is such cute packaging. I do really appreciate that. Um, it comes with this little cover too, so that you can unscrew the product, unscrew the cap, and use this as like a temporary cap when you're working. And you don't have to constantly be like screwing the cap on, unscrewing the cap, on and on, right? Let me go ahead and see if I can get this off. Ooh, interesting. So this is the Black Jam. It is a 3D clay that is a slightly transparent black color. It has to be a little bit jelly, a little bit transparent because um, it does still need to cure, right? And I would say this is similar consistency probably to the Milk Jam is what it's feeling like. I appreciate that it's not sticking at all. I will say that the um, the 3D clear clay is just ever so slightly sticky, like it does stick to my gloves sometimes. Whereas this in the Milk Jam, I haven't really had that problem with. So I like that. You don't get a ton of product. I believe it's, yeah, 15 grams and this bottle is quite large. It's not filled up all the way. And in my experience, that's just a uh, like standard. There's just a lot of room in the jar, but I'm super excited to play around with this and maybe make some like Karomis, something like that. Hopefully you can see some of the texture here. I do think it will hold its shape fairly well, though I would not recommend it for like um, sharp edged characters things that you need like a really clear defined edge it will probably smooth out slightly like you can see already my fingerprints from the texture of the glove are already slightly smoothing out so it's becoming glossy i would not recommend it for again things with very like sharp edges anything like that but i do think it will make for very fun character nails Here's what I mean though. You can put this little cap that it comes with over the top when you're working with it. And it's much easier to remove this than it is to remove like the whole cap and screw it on, unscrew it. So yeah, that is Black Jam. 
Very cool. Excited to use this. And last but not least, and something that I was super excited about was the Divac Once in a Summer 2 collection. So this came out this summer, I believe in July, something like that. So this one, this collection here was gifted to me, just disclaimer, but I was going to buy it myself 100% before Sweetie Nail Supply reached out and said, hey, do you want to have this? Try it out to use it in some content. And so I said, absolutely, yes, I would like to try it. It is a gorgeous set of 10 polishes and they're all different kinds of polishes. So you get three syrup gels, four magnetic polishes, and then two reflective polishes and one kind of like chunky glitter. I actually already did the swatch card for it because it came with a limited edition fancy swatch card. I have never in my life had a swatch card this nice, this fancy. It's like a full wooden frame down here with an acrylic um, holder, I guess, for the color chart. So cool, so bougie. I honestly felt so special um, opening up this package and seeing this inside. I was so excited. It was like Christmas in July, honestly. And so I did my little swatches. I should have a swatching video, a little short coming out soon. Um, that's when I made these, but I will swatch these for you on just like regular swatch sticks. But here are all of the colors. It's just such a pretty collection. I love all of the different types of polishes, like here are your three syrups. You have one, two, three, four magnetic polishes. You have your glitter polish and then your two reflective polishes. Just such a nice variety. You can create so many looks using just these items. Yeah, I'm so happy to have this. Let me go through and swatch each one for you. And this part here, I'm probably gonna try to speed through and put like the little names up in the corner just because this video is already ridiculously long, I'm sure. Now, let me preface this with, I had done my first swatch video thinking, oh wow, the sun is really just setting so beautifully. What good lighting. That would be perfect for a, like a, a summer set. And so I did the swatches in like full evening sunlight. And as I was swatching, some of the polish started curing. So if you notice any lumpiness in these, that is not the polish's fault. That is entirely mine for thinking that I could put these under full sunlight for any period of time without them curing. Not the case at all, right? So this is number one, grapefruit. Really pretty, uh, syrupy, like peachy pink color. Devox polishes, the syrups are definitely more on the sheer side than the Yogurt Nail Korea ones but that doesn't mean that you can build up the color or have like a nice transparent look if that's what you are in the mood for. All right, for the sake of time and getting to bed before 2 a.m., I'm only gonna do two coats of all of these, at least the ones that need it, but here is coat number two. You can get really, really good opacity with three coats. I just, <laughs> I need to go to bed. It's like 1 a.m. now. This is a Boracay, it's one of the magnetic gels. All right, in this collection, it did indeed come with a magnet. I don't remember which magnet it was. I know it was a bar magnet. All right, I believe this is the one it came with. The collection, I just know it was a longer rectangular one. And then going back to a syrup gel, we have this one. Just a really nice, deep, purple, plummy syrup gel. And 
This one here was a surprise favorite for me from this collection. It's DM20 Color of Water. And then this one might be my absolute favorite. This is July Lake. So this is a stunning green cat eye gel that has like a teal base with really lovely golden yellow green shimmer to it. So it looks exactly like sunlight glinting off of the water of a lake. I do really like the story that Deepak tries to sell. All of their collections surround like some sort of concept that I think is really fun. And now we are on to the reflective polishes. All right, so here are the two. They look fairly standard and kind of like unassuming in regular lighting. I do think under flash, these are some seriously gorgeous reflective glitter polishes. Okay, and then the last of the magnetic polishes. So I've used rainbow magnetic polishes before, or at least ones that have like two different colors for both of the magnetic arcs, the um, magnetic lines that show up when you use a, a magnet over them. But this one is something else. It really creates a rainbow with the full spectrum of color and I don't know how they did it. Okay, last one, finally, oh my gosh. I'm looking at my recording time and I have almost three hours so hopefully I can cut a lot of that out and you won't be sitting here for three hours watching this with me. Um, this is Crushed Pearl. And as the name suggests, it looks like crushed pieces of pearl. So one of the fun things about these polishes is that you could very easily layer them. So for instance, Boracay looks amazing over Water Plum just gives it more of an opaque base to layer it this way. You could even do maybe like Boracay over, you could even do Boracay over grapefruit for a more orangey base. Color of water over June hydrangeas for a really pretty like periwinkle base. Or you could layer together like here July Lake over June hydrangeas for more of a, a blue base. So yeah, I, I really like the collection and I think it just has such a nice variety. That's honestly what gets me about the collection is just so many textures. It's not all glitter polishes. They're not all syrup gels. They're not all um, magnetic gels. It truly is something that you can use for a variety of nail art. And I just, I really like that. I like the thought that goes into that. So here are all my goodies and at the risk of sounding cliche, um, I just, I want to say thank you again so much to all of the people who are watching my channel, who support me, who leave a like, leave a comment. I love chit chatting with all of you. If you know, you know, I will be checking the comments. I will have everything linked here that I tried out today down below in case you want to check any of it out for yourself. I just really appreciate everyone who does use my code. It allows me to keep doing what I love and doing these hauls for you guys so that I can show off products and give them a try and recommend them if I think they're good. I do have some other haul type things coming up soon. I did get a dust collector from Melody Susie. They sent me as PR to try and I have that Sweetie Nail Supply Lamp. I don't know how I'm going to fit that into content. If you would like to see just like a shorter one-off video for those two items, those two nail tools, 
let me know and I can try to put something together really quickly. If you use Discord and would like to join my community to just chat all things nails, I have that linked below. If you liked this video and you would like to check out my other hauls, um, I do have a bunch of them linked down below. Every video that I mentioned throughout this one will be there for you to see if you have time and if you would like to check them out. Thank you so much again. I hope you are having a wonderful day wherever you are. I hope that you continue to have a wonderful day and I will see you all next time. Bye.